good, you two? Welcome to another episode of the VIP Sound Lab. I'm your host, Joel Fontaine. This is episode two. And this is one of the most request uh, emails that I'm getting right now on um, how to sequence reason uh, using your machine. All right, so how that works, it works like this. You're going to need basically um, a virtual MIDI port because that's how MIDI works at times. Sometimes your, your dolls are not going to communicate as they should. A lot of times they want to communicate through the hardware port, but a virtual MIDI port would solve that. I would suggest getting something like Loopy, uh, MIDI OX, or MIDI Yoke. And those. They're all free. All right, so on machine, what you want to do over, over here in your modules, you want to jump on the sound tab. And basically, I have some uh, prefabricated right here just for, you know, we want to jump in and jump out right quick on the video. But if I had to set one up quick, let's say if I was over here on sound four, and I labeled this uh, Reason MIDI 4. Basically, what that's doing is letting the machine know where to route the MIDI. In other words, uh, Reason 5, <clears throat> in this particular situation, is going to be a sound module, and Reason is going to trigger that. So on your sound tabs, on your outs, okay, you want to go over here and select where it says MIDI outs. Once you select MIDI outs, you see that the channels come up. You have channels one through 16. Okay, so on the first available sound, I selected uh, MIDI out one. Okay, and on the second one, I did two, three. Here's the one we just did. So you would go over here, you would go to MIDI out and select channel four. And it's as easy as that, and you're pretty much um, set up. I mean, it's, it's, it's not really complex. And uh, a lot of people are having trouble on that. So then from that point, you would have to go over to your other DAW or your sound module that you're going to be triggering uh, the audio from. So let's take a look at that. This particular situation here, I'm using Reason. And right here, you see I have an instance of Kong opened up. And this right here is a custom um, VIP Sound Lab skin that is inside the VIP database. You can grab that now if you want. All right, so over here, as you can see, uh, Loop B, internal MIDI. I'm using Loop B right now. Over here in machine, you go under here under your audio and MIDI settings and make sure you have that set up. If you don't have uh, your virtual MIDI port set up for whatever reason with, with machine, it's going to give you some trouble. It'll say like your MIDI controller is already in use or something, or something a crazy message or something like that. Um, I'm used to doing this in Pro Tools. Pro Tools doesn't give you all that crazy craziness. <laughs> like Pro Tools, you can just go ahead and set up your instrument tracks and route your channels and you're good to go. So with machine, it takes just a little bit more wrench time. Uh, over here under edit, under your preferences, you can see right there I have it under loop B, internal, and that's under uh, advanced. Okay, you want to make sure you have that there and make sure that you don't have your uh, MIDI controller uh, set up right there in this uh, particular situation because it's going to, it won't, it won't work. It's just going to give you some type of error, error message. And then right here under your advanced MIDI devices, this is where you're going to notice all the channels. You see right here, channels one through 16 MIDI channel one. You can see right there is saying Kong. Okay. So now if I go over here in machine, let me turn my speakers up a little bit so you can hear that Kong's being triggered. I'll turn that back down. I don't know if you can hear that. Uh, the way I have my mic set up, you might not hear that, but the Kong was being triggered off. Okay. So when I go over here again, I have the speakers turned down right now. You see right there is triggering off and I only have, uh, one sound on that right now. Cause just for the sake of the video, but you see when I move through the keys, the Kong pads are moving. And if you look over there inside of a uh, machine, the channel one or sound one is being triggered. So you see it, it's, it's working perfectly fine. Um, then from that point in this blank area here in reason, you would just right click and choose other instruments and assign them like so. Let's say if I did the Maelstrom. And Thor. We don't have to go too long because it's just for a video. All right, so now we have two two new devices that need to be triggered by the MIDI inside the machine. So again, you jump over here. We go to channel two. And you notice how they now appear here. Okay, so we'll select uh, Maelstrom for channel two and Thor for channel three. And it's as easy as that, bro. And 
from that point, you would just go back to machine. If I go to MIDI channel two that we set up, turn the speakers up a little bit so you can hear that. All right, you hear that. Now, if I jump down here to uh, channel three, Not sure if you can hear that. We trigger off the last device. Let's go back to reason. And you can see here. You see right there, a little MIDI note. It's triggering off. I go to channel two. Going between the screens is driving me crazy. <laughs> you see the MIDI note here in Maelstrom triggering off. And the LEDs are going off right there. All right, so it's as easy as that. And I'm also gonna go into detail and show you some other things that we have that's new inside the VIP database. So give me two and two and I'll show you what's going on with that. And also I want you to go inside the VIP database, man, and pick up your um, your your controller editor template for reason that I have in there because it's custom mapped. And I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about in a minute because what that does, it gives you full and total control over your reason program just using your machine controller. So if you want to have an easy workflow where you can just sit back, the work's done, you just go in there, everything's pre-mapped, everything from the tempo, um, this fader, I'll show you in a minute. Just give me two and two, I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, and we're back. Welcome back to the VIP Sound Lab. It's your boy, Joel Fontana. I'm in the lab right now. And this basically is what I wanted to show you. This is a major update from the last uh, VIP template that I had for the uh, the reason. Um, I had a lot of um, people hitting me up. They wanted more control with the template. So the old template, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw that out. You guys can just go ahead and uh, you know control, alt, delete that joint. <laughs> Cause this right here is a lot better, man. I'm gonna show you why. This right here is gonna give you a better workflow because I mapped this out a lot more smooth and I'll show you exactly you know, you know what I mean, what I'm talking about. So I really put the wrench time in on this joint to make sure that this joint is going to be thorough. You know what I'm saying? And I got it now. So if you got your machine controller on, you don't got to turn that joint off. If you want to bang on the pads while you're controlling reason, you know what I mean? The faders and sliders, you don't have to worry about turning your machine controller off and jumping over there to that MIDI controller. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'll show you what I mean. All right. For example, I have the pages mapped out. VIP EQ treble bass aux. Then I got mixer tracks one through eight. Then I added an additional nine through 14 for more control. And I also added some pad linking. You know what I mean? To give you that MPC feel. If you want to bang on that, bang on that machine, you know what I mean? And, you know, combine them pads or, or, you know, even if you're just using a MIDI controller, it's not just machine. So I really can't just say, you know, just machine. But if you got a MIDI controller, MPD, whatever, it still works the same. You know what I mean? So if you want to pad link sounds, get that MPC feel, I put that joint in here. And also got um the pads mapped out, all the notes. And also got a on um, page C if you want to use that external MIDI. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna talk too much, man, because I know y'all probably got stuff to do. You know what I mean? But we're gonna keep it moving. So check it out. Here's how it worked. And I'm gonna show I'm gonna go through every single one of these joints to show you I ain't playing VIP Sound Lab, son. So right here I'm on page one. If you move the left and right knob here on a machine controller, you see the pages, they start to move. Like so. And as far as I went on that joint, I'll show you what I mean. So if I hit P1 right here, which is just P right there, which is the pre-aux. See that light going on and off? EQ light. And I'm going to go through every one just like this to show you I ain't playing. Boom. You see every one of them joints going on and off. All right. So if I jump down there to the treble, you see that treble knob moving, right? Bass. And again, I'm going to go through every one. I ain't going to leave nothing out in this joint to show you that I ain't playing. Go through all of that joint. All right, boom. Now I go over here to page two, like so. Now here goes the track volumes one through eight, because one through eight is all that will fit on this page. So if I go like this here, that's one, two, three, four. I ain't going to mess with because that's my mic. All right, five, six, but I will show you that that joint worked. All right, where we at? Six, seven, eight. All right, boom. Now you think you're stuck right there, but you're not. You just hit the page button. 
Boom. Now we over here nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Boom. So you got every one of them tracks tracked out. You got the EQs. You got the, um, all of that, all of that joint, yo. You know what I mean? The only thing I didn't do was, um, the EQs right here from five to 14. You you guys can go ahead and do, and do that. Cause I, I figured, well, that really ain't too, too important. You know, you know what I mean? As far as you want to really get in there and mess with that. You know what I mean? That, that could be mapped in like two seconds. All right, let's get into the meat and the potatoes of this joint. So boom, we got that. And I'm also going to throw in this custom VIP sound lab skin. I do graphic work too. So I'm um, check it out. Here go, here goes the, the Kong drum designer, right? So again, the emphasis on this is workflow. So now when I'm down here on the, um, the machine controller editor, you see right here, I got the boost. So now when I move, this would be the swing knob on the machine controller. See that moving the boost control is for the main volume where the Kong gets mapped out. I right. got a tempo right here. So if you look down here, the tempo button on the machine control the tempo on Kong. You see that moving. Major, majorly dope. Master. Got your master volume up there. Boom. Mapped out. You got the tap the tap button right there. So that's now the note repeat button on the machine controller. Boom. You see the tempo changing? Right now it says 105. Now it says 170. 198, which is crazy, but if I, let me slow that joint down a little bit. I went a little too slow. I joined with 51, but you get the idea. Over there, click the same button. That controls the click over there. Watch the click button light up. Boom. Major. Pattern. There's your pre. Your pre your pre count. The dubs. All right. We got dumb joints. We got the uh the Q record, the duplicate button. Now it becomes the Q record. Watch the Q, the Q record down here light up. Boom. <laughs> what? All right, we got the left and right controls. Dumb. Some of that joint ain't gonna light up, but you see right there rewinding. All right, look, nine one, right? Now watch this. Hit the left button. Boom, went to one. First bar, ninth bar, eighth bar, end of, end of the eighth bar, rather. What's crazy? All right, we got the rewind buttons to rewind. Boom, rewind. Fast forward. Anywhere in the track. See that joint moving? The little. Locate, I should say. Locate a moving. Look at that joint. Major. All from the machine controller. Mapped out. Crazy. VIP sound lab, son. Yo, check it out. The grid button now becomes the stop button. Check it out. When I press play, it's playing, right? Hit shift. I might not shift, but grid. Now it stops. See what I'm saying? The um the restart button, the loop button, whatever you want to call it. Boom. You see the loop lighting up right there. Boom. Crazy. Crazy. All right, the record button. Saying that, you know, I need to label that. By the time y'all get this, I should be calling that record. I left it as the uh, the MIDI CC learn though. <laughs> but I'm a, I'm gonna write record right there. I left. I forgot that. Oh my bad, y'all. I'm, I'm gonna fill that in for y'all. Don't worry about that. But anyway, record button. Boom. You see it working. All right. Boom. That joint's in there. Major. Check out the pads. I mapped out every one of the pads, son. You see these pads? Watch this. I got my mic hooked up, so you ain't gonna hear the sound over over there. But look, pad one, pad. Well, let me turn this up a little bit. I don't know if y'all can hear that. That's the snare, and that's the kick. I don't want to get no feedback on my mic, so I'm gonna turn it down. But anyway, you get the idea. Check it out. Look at all the pads: three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Majorly dope. I'm, now I'm, I'm controlling my Kong while I got the machine controller on. You know what I'm saying? Look at, the, look at the track volumes up there. While I'm doing all of this up here, man, look at that. While I'm doing all of that up there, I could come down here and still do whatever. Crazy. All right, then boom, look, check it out. It don't stop there. I got pad linking up in this joint. If I go to the first page, pad linking. All right, here goes my pad links. I did this for if you want that NPC fill. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me turn this pad link off. 
I must have been playing around that joint. But yo, it works like this. Let's say if you want this kick to be combined with this snare, or if you know, if you had, you know, if you were laying kicks or whatever, if I'm on this pad right here, I would just press pad one, but you gotta be on the pad linking page. Now check it out. I'm I'm going from the pad page to the pad linking page. So now it serves a different function. It's not gonna trigger off the sounds, it's gonna do this. Over here, you see I'm on drum assignment one. Now look on the pad group, link D comes up. All right, so now if I'm over here on the snare, drum assignment two, again, I hit, hit the pad link button. The pad now serves a different function. All right, boom. All right, now they're linked together. Now, if you try to trigger this, the drum sounds on this page, it's not going to work. You have to change this back to pads one through 16. All right, so how you would do that on the machine controller is just basically changing the group buttons here. So you don't have to have this controller editor template open. So if I'm like this, okay, look, if I hit group A, look, pad linking. If I hit group B, look, now I'm on the pads. So now I'll jump over here to group B or press B. Now when I hit the, um, boom, you hear them both? Let me turn this up. Majorly dope. They're both triggering off at the same time. You know what I mean? Also through in the um, pad C right here for the external MIDI. So, yo, VIP Sound Lab exclusive. I got it right there on the desktop. You see it right there, VIP Sound Lab, recent controller, and template. <clears throat> so, I'm going to throw in a template with the skins so you can open this joint up and you can start getting busy right away. Majorly fresh, man. I mean, what more could you ask for? This joint is laid out, son. Laid out, major. I took the wrench time. And believe me when I tell you, man, I'm telling you, man, tedious. The mappings is not no joke, son. And I mean, you can um, you could come in here, and I mean, if you want to sign different stuff and and add this and add that, you could do that. But the work's done on this one. You don't have to sit there and find all them notes and go through all the mappings, and everything is correct, fresh. Y'all see me walk through it, so it's dope. So again, the last one, I'm taking that joint out, putting this one in. It's your boy Joe Fontaine of the VIP Sound Lab, episode two. Be sure to um stay tuned for episode three. I've been like real busy, so I've been pumping out the, the videos the way I should, but I'm changing the game as far as my true videos. I'm making them a lot more thorough or a lot more in-depth. I'm trying to step my game up, you know what I mean, and really come with come with the heat for y'all, you know what I mean? So be sure to come by, by uh, the web, the website, the YOLA site. I'm not on that no more. I'm on the Weebly site now. So I'm going to leave the link in the description for the new VIP um Sound Lab. Y'all can come over there, sign up, $9.99, no monthly fees. You know what I mean? It's a lifetime membership. You don't have to worry about paying fees over and over and over and over and over. You know what I mean? You just pay a one-time fee, $9.99. That's it. And boom, you in there for life, son. Now, drum kits, um, controller editor templates. I got, I got. Matter of fact, when I end this vid, I'm, I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw up. I'm, I'm gonna throw some little flyers showing y'all what's new inside the VIP database. Uh, for example, the VIP HD drums, the Renaissance, the studio. I got controller editor templates. I got the Ableton Live NPC Slice preset. Um, man, you'll, yo, you'll see. Yo, when I end this vid, I'm going to throw it up. So I'm out for right now. I don't want to run too long. You know what I mean? We probably running good 15, 20 minutes in this vid right now. So I ain't going to run too long. But yo, check it out.